This might be the earliest that I've ever started a video. Uh, I got a wife and daughter still asleep. I've got about 45 minutes until sunrise, uh, which means I don't have very much time. What I'm doing today is cleaning my solar panels. I've never really done this, but it's been much requested that I do a video comparing before and after. What's the difference when you just clean your solar panels? So I'm gonna take this thing here, which is a hose attachment uh, with a brush on the end. It's made for washing cars. I'm gonna use clean my solar panels then give you guys a before and after comparison see how much more power I'm able to generate with them clean because they're pretty dirty right now. Excellent! The Hydro X series is Corsair's new line of custom cooling parts built for the world's most powerful and stunning systems. They've gone all out with CPU and graphics card water blocks, pump reservoir combos, fittings, tubing, radiators, and coolant, providing you with everything you need to build a spectacular custom cooling loop that lowers system temperatures and improves performance, complete with vivid RGB lighting. Click the sponsor link in the video description to learn more. Well, that was me thinking I could just wake up in the morning and clean my solar panels. What a fool I was. But uh, to get back to the point, this video actually has a very short conclusion. So if that's all you're here for, then feel free to skip up to that point in the video and you can see what the conclusion is. The thesis of this video, if I can start at sort of a high level, is that I have solar panels, they get dirty, Cleaning them every few months is recommended. I've actually gotten emails to remind me to do that. But how much of an impact does cleaning your solar panels actually have on how much electricity is generated? I'm gonna to try to answer that question today. So some quick backstory here. I have had solar panels, actually a solar panel array as well as a power wall from Tesla Solar and they've actually been installed since mid 2018, which is about a year and a half ago. The installation was documented in a separate video series on my channel and I also did follow-up videos to measure the performance and value of that entire investment after six months and one year. So feel free to check out those videos if you want. There's actually a whole playlist on the topic if you wanna watch the entire playlist. To sum up, I really have no complaints about my power wall or, or the solar array. They've been working great. No real complaints about them. Sometimes I get a power bill, sometimes I get a credit. They tend to balance each other out. And even just having finished up summer and now moving into fall, we didn't have any major huge power bills over the summer, even when we were using the uh, AC a little bit more. So that's real nice. But the number one requested follow-up to my original series on the power wall and the solar was to test how much electricity is generated by dirty panels versus clean panels and to compare the two. Now for science, of course, and not because I'm lazy, I've been letting my solar panels get dirty for quite some time. I've never actually gone up there and physically cleaned them myself. They do tell you that with regular rain, they will get rinsed off from time to time, so that's okay. But for extended periods without rain, they do recommend going up and giving them some cleaning. I was sort of waiting for a really good time to do this testing because what I needed was as many sunny, cloud-free days as possible in a row. And since most weather forecasts only go out about 10 days or so, it was a little hard to gauge when that was gonna happen. But fortunately, October was a mostly clear month here in Southern California, so that's the month that I am comparing to. Now, if you're ever gonna clean your solar panels, it's recommended that you clean them while they are cool and while they are not in direct sunlight and generating power. So that means evening or early morning are the two options for when you wanna clean, unless you wanna do a midnight cleaning, I suppose, but that's up to you. My original plan was to get up super early and do it before the sun rose, hence the intro to this video. But before I get too far ahead of myself, I wanna point out that the time of year, of course, has a great impact on how much power is generated by solar as well. The autumn equinox at the time when the day and the night are the same same, exact same length of time it was actually Monday, September 23rd this year, which is about six weeks ago. So that should be taken into consideration. I'm generating a lot less power than I would during a peak period of time, during the middle of the summer, for example. And the values, of course, are gonna change depending on the time of year it was. I suspect, though, that my overall results would scale up or down depending on how long the daylight was lasting if you're testing during the dead of winter or the height of summer. Getting back to the cleaning, though, the first attempt I made, I actually was getting ready to do it and I realized the night before that I didn't have a ladder. I need an effective way of getting up onto my roof if I want to do a good cleaning. So attempt two was the next day. I went and got a ladder the previous day, did a bunch of prep getting cameras set up and ready. Then I went and found that my hose out front has a spray nozzle attached to it and it was basically fused cauterized, galvanized, whatever, to the hose itself. It was kind of frustrating that morning because I went out there all thinking I was all ready to go and I wanted to attach this to the hose and I couldn't remove the nozzle that was already on there. So, had to delay again, basically went and got a new hose. 
Fortunately, after that, I had a successful attempt and I decided to clean in the evening rather than the morning. Better visibility at that time of day, not just for me being able to get my bearings up on the roof, but also filming it from a couple different locations as you see in the footage, hopefully. Also a bonus, it's not nearly as cold since we are working with water and it's magic hour, which is a lovely time for filming, doing video or taking photos if you happen to be into photography. An important note though, what I wanted to do was scrub actually use something physically to scrub the top of the panels and you should be careful if you're doing that you want to use something that's not abrasive that's not going to damage them for that purpose my wife actually bought me this uh, car washing hose brush attachment thing it has a brush on the end fires the water out through here so you can brush and wash at the same time and big big bonus uh, that i didn't realize it had is it's got a decent extension on there too, which was really helpful for reaching a little bit further down on the solar panels. When I actually got up there though, to the apex of the roof, and I looked down and I realized that I could just, I could fall and die at any moment. And I'm not really wearing the best shoes and I'm also a little bit of a coward when it comes to stuff like that. So I only did a little bit of a cleaning job with this. Basically the upper panels that I was able to reach from the top of the roof, I scrubbed off with this and that worked and it got them cleaner. Beyond that, I was just sort of hosing down from the top, which is a bit more like the sort of natural cleaning that you might get just from a regular rainfall. Looking at how clean it was getting with just the hosing down though, I was like, oh, this is probably fine. I don't need to scrub everything off. But I did decide to scrub down those upper panels because that's what's within reach and I didn't have to venture down the sides. But then I discovered after it had dried and everything and a day or two had gone by looking up like, oh yeah, there's actually a pretty noticeable distinction between the areas that I scrubbed off with this thing versus the areas that were just hosed down. So I think it certainly can be said that the panels could be cleaned better than what I actually did for this test. Now because of that, I was actually a little bit worried that my results weren't gonna be very significant and that I was gonna have to maybe redo this again or something like that. But I just let a few days go by and I actually got some results. So let's look at those now. My method was to use the Tesla app on my phone. I went back for the entire month of October and I basically saw how much solar was generated every single day. I removed outliers. So anytime it was overcast and there was a noticeable dip in the amount of power that was generated, I just kicked those results out because all I wanna see is how much power is being generated on a clear sunny day. I then plugged all that data into a spreadsheet and I just used Google Sheets for this. And uh, you might notice on my list here, the, there are some missing days. Again, those are the days when it was overcast, when there was noticeably less power generated. I tried to leave in as many results as possible so I could get good results overall. I then took those and put them on a chart that you can hopefully see right here. And then I established a trend line because as the values go up and down, there is a trend line in between them that just shows the normal drop off over time. And then I had to do some spreadsheet kung fu to figure out how to do projections. Fortunately, I was able to figure that out over here in order to see what would have been generated, assuming I had not cleaned the uh, solar panels themselves. So these bolded results down here in the lower left from October 27th through November 1st are those projected results, not the actual measured solar generation because I cleaned the panels on the evening of October 26th. And then on the 27th, there was actually uh, fires locally and it was kind of overcast as well. So I kicked that result out. We did have some more fires on October 29th. So these results down here, which are the actual results after the panels were cleaned, you might notice a dip on that day. And that is because of fires and it being a little bit overcast. But with that, once we had the projection and once I had the actual results, I was able to compare the two to tell the difference between them. And oh my gosh, that was actually pretty significant more than I was expecting. We were between 30 and 40%, uh, about 32% on the low end, about 38.3% on the high end. Again, this day on October 29th, uh, there were fires and it was hazier, so there was not as much power generated. But to me, those results there, being between 30 and 40%, are significant, significantly significant, if I do say so myself. So to conclude, should you clean your solar panels? What difference will it make? Uh, obviously your solar panels might be dirtier or cleaner than mine, but if your solar panels have not been cleaned, I would say in at least three months, if not even less than that, depending on how easy it is to access them with a hose, you should at least hose them down because that's essentially what I did for the most part, hosed them down and that resulted in a 30 to 40% improvement in the amount of power that was generated. Uh, that was more than I was expecting. 
That makes me think I should hose them down more frequently because we don't get that much rain here in Southern California, so they do tend to get dirty and dusty over time. And if you happen to have solar panels and you go and clean them, then I would be very interested to see if you have the same results as I did. If you're getting something like a 30 to 40% improvements in solar electricity generated simply as a result of giving your panels a quick rinse down. Now I have a further question, which is noting the difference between actually giving it a bit of a scrub with this versus just hosing it down, would that provide even more of an impact? I can't say I have a scientific measurement of that right now because I had some cleaner panels and some less clean but still hosed down panels. But if I am capable of anything, it's talking about a potential video and then actually following it up even if it's six months, a year, or two years later. So let me know in the comments if you guys would be interested if in the future I could do a cleaning job with just the hosing. I'll do something for my fear of falling to my death in that case to make sure I can actually get a good cleaning on all of them. And then comparing the two of those to see if it's worth it to get something like this put a little bit more elbow grease into it and give it a more full, thorough cleaning. Let me know if you guys wanna see that in the comments section down below. Let me know if you enjoyed this video, if it benefited you at all, hit the thumbs up button on your way out. If it did, of course, or if you liked it, or if you just wanna be a nice person, that's cool too. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And then of course, check out my store if you wanna buy some shirts, some merch like this, cause that helps me out a ton as well. Thanks again for watching guys, and we'll see you next time.